How you doing there, folks? Welcome back to episode 56 of the VM podcast. We would like to welcome our special guest on tonight, our very good friend, Mr. Darren Murph. How you doing there, sir? All good, man. Hey, um, uh, thank you for the invite. Delighted to be here. Thank you very much for coming down. Um, first of all, we just want to say a massive thank you to this week's sponsor, Party Putters. First and foremost, what a name that is. Um, just a wee quick read on that Party Putters before we go uh, any further. Party Putters is a nine-hole mini golf hired tailored especially for weddings. For those in between moments during the drinks and reception and the meal to evening entertainment, I won't lie. I know it's an ad and all, but this is a this is fucking class. I I only I got married two weeks ago and I had this at my own wedding. Very good. Want something to make your wedding stand out from the crowd? Look no further. Get in contact with them on Instagram. Murph. What the fuck is the fact? First and foremost, thank you for the taps. How well do we look? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a limit piece every time. And he looks <laughs> I know it looks like uh, I'm wearing Marty's and Marty's wearing mine. <laughs> <laughs> that tattoo's starting to split there, so it is. Murph, end the season, hey. How are you feeling relieved or? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't say relief, like, because I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, it's been definitely a long season. There, there's no question about that. There's been lots of challenges that I probably didn't think would be there. Uh, but look, the players have been brilliant and, you know, to get so close to the playoffs, obviously it became, it, it's disappointing, like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because we, we, we were running around the playoff spot all all season and then just to miss out and with one game to go, I suppose that's football. Uh, nobody probably gave us an opportunity to be anywhere near the playoffs. So from that point of view, uh, well pleased. Uh, look forward to the break uh, and then see... What what what's next? I suppose that's what you all do. You know, you go back and reflect in the season, but you have to reflect yourself as well. So. Yeah, I heard you in an interview saying about uh, the way it's the end of the season now, and obviously there's a defeat last Friday, and then you thought after a bad result, at least you have next Friday to look forward to, but now you don't, because <laughs> <laughs> obviously the break, <laughs> obviously a break, you suffer a bit longer. Uh, look, last Friday's game was more of a an anti climax, if anything. Uh, it was just, it was, you know, just to get the season finished. That's mm-hmm. what you wanted, you know what I mean? So the one thing the players have been able to do this year is, uh, is respond. But unfortunately for them now, you know, that, that's the season being undone. Uh, some people will go different directions. Hopefully some people will stay. And then you just go again. You know, that's that, mm-hmm. that's what you have to do. And, that, and that's that's irrelevant who, who's at the top of the... The top of the tree and the in the the coaching role. If that's me, that's what happens. But just like the players, I, I'll take time as well. It's been uh, a strange season mm. in lots of ways because, as I did say, like we have had so much to deal with. I have had so much to deal with in my personal life as well. So that that's been that's been made a challenge. And uh, some some of the challenges you knew were coming, mm. but there's been some very unexpected ones. And uh, but there's been some laughter along the way. I have to say now mm. some of the. The, the journeys to the far fields of Ireland uh, ha, have been enjoyable mm. coming back up there. You, you said a lot of them journeys too. Did you did you learn a lot about yourself over the season? A lot a lot about your managing career. A lot, have you learned a lot? Like I've learned a lot about me. Yeah, as a person, mm. I certainly have. Uh, I learned how there's certain things that came my way. Maybe the old me wouldn't wouldn't have been able to handle, but I've I've been able to handle that and and you know. Even in my game, you're still learning. So it was a very, very, very much a learning season for me as well because it had been a long time from I'd actually been in the dugout as a head coach. Yeah. I'd been in the dugout for a long time as a an assistant manager or a first team coach. But when I left my role at Dungan, I didn't ever think I'd manage again. Mm. So, you know, uh, to do it for the full season uh, has shown me that I have the capabilities of doing it. I think uh, I command respect within the changing room. Uh, I think the players listen to me and I think they understand that, you know, uh, what I'm trying to do is the best for them. You know, the, the first promise I made them when I took the job was I would try and treat them the way I want my own son to be treated. He's a he's a full time footballer at Glen Torn Football Club. So I I, I want the, the players to feel how I would want him to feel. And that's what I've tried to do. Mm. So hopefully that has that's came across. Uh, I, I've been. Well helped in that role by all my staff. Uh, my staff have been magnificent. Yeah, you know, Kevin and Tommy and Eamon and Nicola, 
and, and Shane and Owen and Gary have been magnificent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they they deal with some of the stuff that I can't deal with, and if I need to take a night off to go and watch a game or, or do stuff within the, the committee, I know it's in good hands. And mm -hmm. I think that was the most important part of the job was getting surrounding myself with good staff. And I was able to do that, and I certainly couldn't have done the job without them. Mm -hmm. Do you? I was meant to ask you. Do you, Do you go and watch much watch football yourself, like I, local, even local football? Yeah, look, uh, I do. I, I watch. I watch quite a bit of it. You know, I, I've watched a lot of the first division in, in the NFL uh, Championship this year. I watch a lot of NFL Premiership games. I do a bit of work on a Saturday afternoon uh, at NFL Premiership games. You know, so. I've watched a lot of the Donegal League games as well, so it, it it it's something that you have to do because you're always where we are, where we're based. We have to try and find local talent within the, this part of the world because it's very very difficult. You know, we we don't have the financial resources. The that funds are not there. Not not the way they used to be. Well, I'm back playing for Glencairn uh, in the Saturday League. I don't know if you'll go down that deep. I'm just back from retirement again. So have a look at me some Saturday. I still have a bit of football on me, you know. Well, I did. I did play with these two guys in the charity game, like you know. So to be fair, I have I've, I've kept my I've, I've kept my eye on after you know Vinny's majestic performance and uh, by all accounts a wonderful goal. Majestic, me fucking. That's all he did. <laughs> and you know what, Murphs? Well, I missed it because I was in the shower at that stage. But I came out and look. I suppose the way the only way you can judge football the proofs in the pudding, isn't it? Yeah, would add a ball of argument that night before too. Yeah, just. What? Give me a bit of praise. He got man of the match good, as well. Good goal, eh? Get man of the match, so we've got to give him. I did. He did. He did do well. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I got man of the match. Anna scored a screamer, and that's all you did. And the ball came into me. I think it was a corner. It came out to the header out the edge of the box and hit her in the half volley. He shouted, "Leave it!" Because no. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting man of the match if you didn't. Score. Who, was goal, who was the goalkeeper? Eamon Curry. He's a he could play a big heavy up. man. Uh, uh, Eamon's my goalkeeping coach. Is he? Aye. Uh, hey, uh, he's fucking good. Remember Savy made it in the over. first half? He pulled it out of the back of the net. Ah, uh, Eamon's a Straban man, like so. You know, he's, he's, he's quite thick, like you know. Fuck, know. he's a good goalkeeper, eh? But he's good lad. Here, he's one of the ones. He's the comedian of the staff. Like, if, if you want to have a bit of banter and mm. uh, you, you know, need that some too. jokes. Oh Jesus, hey, you need that around the. Uh, Eamon is top good to know. We can tell a lot of jokes on our channel. I think that's what yeah, I got around the most clubs I did. <laughs> Eamon <laughs> clubs and that. Don't use me for the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to hear Eamon's joke someday when he's picking the ball out of the back of the net that happened and passed him. Isa. <laughs> so we'll just go for a break here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Murph, Marty touched on funds. Obviously, the financial uh, things aside aren't there. Fun, fun hard. Would you say that not like they used to be? It's like I think it's like all League of Ireland clubs. You know what I mean. It is getting tougher. Oh, you know, yeah. like, mm. and that's not just in football. You know, the cost of living oh, is extremely hey, tough. Geez, we push Christ. that. We try and push that as much as we can on this year, like because it's yeah. that's that's crazy. It like. is, and you know, and I think sometimes we all need to just take a wee step back. You know, to get a game on at Finn Park every other Friday night. And the amount of the costs, you know, not to delve into it too much, like, but for for us to go away from home, you know, we we'd probably spend between twelve and fifteen hundred pound on a bus. We would then spend somewhere in the region of eight hundred pound on food. And About then, buying dinner, so that, yeah, pretty much meals meals after. Mm. Now, just game. that would probably go up to about thirty three hundred if you did say, Marty. <laughs> I don't need that much. They fucking eats out all the thing. Lump. I will. He told me he was away at the weekend, so you think that's the main right? All the fucking so, takes. Yeah, holiday at the weekend. So uh, no. You ever see his fringe? Oh, hi. <laughs> Paul Tennis is fly since February two thousand and twenty. So, his name's Bertie. <laughs> uh, swear to God, I every time you open the rules, you're flat. That's all, Tennis. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <shit. laughs> <laughs> no, so it is that there, there's that, that type of costs, you know, mm. and you, and you think we have to do that eighteen times a season, mm. you know, and when you're going the further away, you know. This year we had to cut back on the uh, overnight stays. You know, an overnight stay was somewhere in the region between two and a half and four thousand euro. So we would have had to have eight of them this year, which is another forty, forty five. You know, it's, so it's a lot of money. Travel back to the upper road. Straight that's up, it's tough too. It's very tough. You know, like I look at the the boys that are coming from in a show. You're probably talking forty five minutes to get the Bali buffet. You know, so if we were going to Cork, we're like we're leaving. Bali Buffet at 9 o'clock in the morning and you're not getting back to 6, mm. 7 o'clock the next morning next so morning. it's maybe a 22 hour day 
you know, so it's it, it's been tough, and the players deserve a lot of credit for that. And that, that's not me making excuses. You know, yeah. I know sometimes people have uh, uh, had their their own we say, and I I don't read the social media, but mm. other people are quite keen to come and tell me what people say about me. It doesn't really affect me, to no. be honest. I couldn't really give a toss. Well, lump it off your right. So, <laughs> but it, you know, I, I would like some of them to come on that journey. Because yeah. it, it's it's a tough gig, like hundred percent. It's a tough gig when you're going from from in a show to carry, and then you're going from carry to in a show, and you're doing it in one day, or you're going for, like when Patrick Furry comes from Gador. You know, there's there's different peoples come from all different parts of the county, and so it's not just we're leaving Bally Buffet. They have yeah. to get there, and then they're coming off a long bus journey home, maybe a six hour, six and, and a half hour journey, and then they're having to drive another hour to get home. I remember getting the quarterfinals with lagging against a team in Wexford. We had to go down and up in the one day and the boys passing and the fucking five litre drums because your boy wouldn't fucking stop in the bus. And it's all different now. Aye. You know, anything the bus drivers, you know, when we're going to Cork we need two. Because and if we don't get two then we'll have to have a, an extra forty five minute stop because the bus driver must take the forty five minutes. Oh, because the, the, yeah. the fucking thing. So all them rules all them all them things are different now in the game, you know, and I think the the, the the most testing time for for me and the players and the club was the the five games out of six where we were away to Cork twice, away to Cove, yeah. away to Waxford, Kerry, and no away to Limerick. I thought so, it was Kerry, wasn't it? Yeah, they were they were the one after. Oh, the, the back. group after you won yeah. game, then you're away. Again. Yeah, and then we were back to Cork and Kerry back to back. So they have been the the testing time. So. You know, it is it is it is difficult, and here that's why mm. to do what they've done as a group of players that deserve immense credit, and, and they've yeah. been led by a really somebody who I, I want to stay, somebody who I want to stay a long time, not just as, as a as a player. I want them to to be around the club longer than his plan is. Is Tony McNamee? He has been immense in how he has handled the group of players along with myself. You know, anything that has been thrown my way. I've bounced it off him and he's bounced it back off it's me. Funny, he doesn't look like a person that that has that, if you know what I mean. Like He's he a leader. Looks, he looks quiet. Yeah, he's quiet. You know I mean? Aye. But he leads in very unassuming ways Aye. and it's hugely important and, and he, he commands so much respect in the changing room. Him and David Colley, they're the two senior, real mm. senior players that I have. And and to be fair to both of them, you know, the, the way they've conducted themselves this yeah. year. You know, David's coming out of 10 years professional football they all of a sudden go into like a part time environment, and 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 he's conducted himself, and yeah. I'm sure it's been a shock to him, but he, but he's dealt with it like the rest of them, and uh, as I say, next year will be no different. Mm. You know, it'll be another tough year. There's no point saying any different. Tell me us, um, or <clears throat> would you take a bad, what would you take a bad result, homey, or would you leave it all, uh, leave it all in Fun Park, or is it hard not to do that? I've I've learned not to. Right. Uh, I think and that's the most important thing. You mm. know, one bad result shouldn't affect everybody else that's in my life. That, so, that yeah, that's that's why I kind of I was wondering. Then I was a few. You know, it's probably hard though. It can be difficult, mm. but I I have learned that you know, I'm a great believer in when you're asking the players to come and play. Mm. Whatever problems you have, leave them at the door. Yeah. Come and do your job and pick them up on your way back out. Yeah. So I've learned to reverse that. Whatever issues I have at Finn Park, leave them at Finn Park and then deal with them when I have to deal with them. You know, the last thing, you know, Sandra or one of my sons lives in Nottingham, but my, my other boy that lives at home, uh, Harry and, and my mother-in-law, Carol, the last thing that they want is, is me coming in. Mm -hmm. They have still got a Saturday and a Sunday before I'm back to Finn Park on the Monday. So you have to learn that. You have to learned and it's not their fault oh yeah so it's you know what it's, I mean it's hard isn't it at the start when I was younger 100% I would have been I would have been oh, mm. I would have went and sat in the room and turned the TV off and looked at the wee red dot in the corner and somebody had opened the door to shut it tight again shut but them days, are go them days are gone you know I'm, I'm a great believer in now if I go and do my job to the best of my ability and it doesn't work for me and the team well then that's just life you know mm -hmm. you can't win a recent so it's game it's all to do with learning like Learning. It's just like if Liverpool's on at the early game, it defines your Saturday if they're beat. Your form. Yes. And if you're playing if you're playing football like on Saturday if you're beat, you're fucking horrible form that evening. Yeah. I find that with me, you know. Aye, and it's, it is a hard thing, but I think through the age and obviously where my father before he passed away, him him not being well, I, I, you know, I still had a lot of stuff that needed to be done 
in that part of my life as mm. well. So, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't let football control that because that, mm. that that's what's most important to me. So, uh, that that's the, that's. But I think you only learn that as you get older and you, you understand the game. That that's that's the game. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Get the haircut. Get your haircut. Come here. Uh, you said your father passed away. What was uh, what was he like growing up? Did he push you in your path towards football or? Was it the opposite? No, it's a strange. Uh, it's not strange. You know, I've said this a few times, and uh, my dad came to every single game that I played at junior level. You know, mm. when I was nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right up until I was fifteen or sixteen, and I, I remember running home to the house and telling them, "Dad, I'm with the put it down senior team this weekend." You know, it's a big thing for me. Like it was, mm. you know, your debut in the Irish League, and and he went. Brilliant, delighted for your son. He says, uh, I'll not be at that game. And I was like, what? And he was like, uh, you know, that's a man's game now. Sometimes stand on your own two feet. So and, it. and he, he never, he never, he never come to see me play live. He never come to a game, you know, even the 2005 St. Tanta Cup final. I begged him to come. And he wouldn't come? He wouldn't come. But he, he, he would have always picked the phone up afterwards. How did it go and stuff like that? But he I was, checked him. he was a great believer in, you, you got to fight your corner and you take it out. And, and, but he, Fully, fully supportive, and and uh, you know, always was there. When I went into the management and coaching, he did then come, mm. you know, and then mm. he'd have rung me after the game, and he'd have, like, well, you didn't do that. What right. he, he went through, I went through you your bad, bad good You didn't do that right. So I was one day, do me a favour, just don't come. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, then, and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he never. Yeah. He, he never came back. He never even come to Finn Park. So it, 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 that was just, that was just him, you know. So that look here. I said it in the changing room and quite openly I've, I've no problem in saying it I, I it was never it wasn't easy losing my father it certainly wasn't no. uh, but I lost him in a place where I got so much support uh, and so many so many people you know came came to the house it was amazing people that have known me a long time in the north yeah uh, they were next minute these people from Donegal were just coming into the house <laughs> at the wake and when they were going back up the road, people said to me, you not understand what that meant until, you know, you get a wee bit of time to reflect on it. Reflect and, on and, it. And, and to be fair, you know, I look at it, it certainly wasn't easy, but losing them where I lost them and when I lost them, to have the, the people around me that it did, mm. made it easier. Easier, It, yeah. it certainly did. And, and I've, I've thanked each and every one of them, you know, me and the rest of my family. We, we were overwhelmed by the amount of Support. every the players, like so every... All the players, the the committee, the support, some supporters. It, it was, and even now, when we're we're seven seven weeks on, people that I meet still will come up, and that's the yeah. first thing a lot of people say to me. And that there, that has been the best part of my job, is the people. people. I have met some unbelievable people in the two years I've been here. It has been magnificent, and I, and I, and I think that that and being out in the community and and. and I wouldn't say it was exciting, but getting into the sea <laughs> last, last weekend for the swim for pink, it was. <laughs> but again, you met so many different people at it, but uh, uh, it was an experience. It's the first do, time I've ever. Do you not it. like cold water? Oh Jesus! Hey, it was. It was certainly cold. Mm. Now, uh, but I, I loved it, and, and all the other things that that, that I've done outside just being. Some balls coming out of the cold water, isn't it? Ah, oh, some balls going in it. <laughs> Spar your cock looks like it was, it well, was uh, like uh, I couldn't find it when it came out. That's why I had to go into the bush. Your bushes. cock looks like a snail on crack. <laughs> I, to, I went into the bush. I, I into couldn't find mine going into water. <laughs> it gets the, hard when you go into the good water. I went into the bushes to went into the bushes to get changed. I spent more time rubbing to try and find it than I actually try, try myself off. Your pubes started to pass. <laughs> so it was a uh, no, and that that part of it for me has been has been brilliant. And when it comes to making my decision about staying or going, mm. the hardest part of it, believe it or not, is the people. Yeah. Because everyone has welcomed me with open arms. And, and I think that's maybe helped because I have a personality that, you know, I, I want to be involved in the community. And, and uh, we are a community-based club and we need to be. And we need to be out there. It's easy to say it. Yeah. It's harder to go and do it. And, yeah. I, and I've, been, I've been very willing. And, and any... I would like to think in any request that's come in, either to myself or the club, I've, I've always said yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I've said no in, in the two years that I've been there. And yeah. I, I, you know, if I do stay on my role, then I'll continue to be that type of person because 
at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm just a normal guy who enjoys life. Enjoys life. Enjoy enjoy life. life. I just want just want to say that we actually have a road up there where it says, um, two seconds, just to see where it is. Um, very good community man slash charities, and that's fucking very true. And you, I don't know if you do get a lot of credit for this, but like. And you're on about your character and stuff. Um, it's it's actually amazing to see someone in such a big role in Donegal do such good for the community. Because mm. I would say, um, Finn Harps managers, I don't know how long they're running, but I would say in the last 40 years, if we had asked Nick Wan to have a chat with us on this podcast, they would tell us to fuck off. And that's not even a lie. That's not <laughs> no, a joke. Not and that's honest. And you're on about meeting good people and all in the community in your job. We can't, we like under, you don't understand the people we've met and you're one of them and we push that everywhere we go. Yeah. We've met so many good people doing this and the exact same because we can relate to it. You, you got said. a Christmas show, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but honest to God, you, I don't know if you get a lot of credit, but you should be fucking like, you should be, you should be fucking, um, what's the word, P? It's not proud, but don't know what the word is, but just fair play to you for doing what you fair do because it's, it's, it's. <laughs> It's not easy, like, but um, as you say, it's your character, I think. You're just a, a fucking normal guy. That no point, no life. point changing that. Aye. You, know, I, you know, people sort of say to me, you know, uh, when win, lose, or draw, you know, it, it, depending on, 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 on when it is or how it is or, or whatever night I'm staying in, in, in Donegal, whatever night I'm staying, I'll, I'll sit and I'll, I'll maybe have a beer and somebody will say to me, bad result at the weekend, didn't go well for you, you know. You need to do this, and I go. Yep, no problem, hundred percent. You know, I'm, I'm a great believer in footballs about opinions. Yeah. You know, so, it, you know, my opinion's not always the right one, and I've certainly got things wrong. But sometimes supporters' opinions aren't always the, the right mm. thing too. You know, because the hardest thing about being a supporter is you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes yeah. all the time. So you only have the perception of what you see. What I have tried to do is be a wee bit more open and honest with lots of people, and 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 haven't really kept things away from people. And I think maybe. At the start, uh, people were a wee bit skeptical of that. You know, is he trying to or, or yeah. what's yeah. going on here? But I, I think that's helped me, and it's helped the football club. You know, right from day one, I, I said that. You know, and and it's, it's since come out after I said it from day one. If, if we don't get the stadium up and running and moving, there won't be football in Donegal. You know, when I no. when I first said that. In my very first press conference, people were like, shouldn't have said that. Mm. That makes it look so, as if I went, it's the truth. Nah, it's the truth. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's too late telling the truth when it's, when it's way by you. Mm. you know, and, and, and now it has come to light. That's, that's, that's what we need to do. And, yeah. and that's, that's where we are. And I think, I think that part of it, you know, is, is the easiest part of it for me is that, that I, I, I am approachable, mm. irrelevant of how we have do, done, you know, how we have done on the pitch, even when we went through the really difficult run of, of not a win in six, you know, somebody had asked me to go and do something, and the, and certain people, oh, I wouldn't be doing that. Mm. Why not? Why? Yeah, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Why? Why? Why, why not? Mm. You know, if we win six, go and do it. You know, I think I think it, 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 the easiest thing is, you know, when things aren't going well, it's always easier. You always find people that will come out and have a wee, you know, a wee bit of a go. Yeah. You know, but when things are going well. It's, it's very more difficult to come out and say, do you know what, they're actually going well and they've done a good job. Mm. So that, that that's, you learn that in football. So I don't think that'll, I don't think that'll affect me as a person going forward. No. I'll, I'll be the same guy who, who enjoys, who enjoys a laugh. I've had a few laughs guys over the last <laughs> two <Yeah>. years. Yeah. <laughs> so. To so, be fair, all our live shows, Murph's been there fucking front row, everyone and having a laugh. Like, and, uh, and that, you know I mean? think and that's, that's important. Part, I, I think that's important. Part, got me lost. You boys do, Amazing work as well, you know, uh, in the, the local us. community. You do. Uh, we, we, uh, that's as you say, we're we're all enough for the laugh. Like, oh, we, mm. we're trying not to take life too serious. And well, your twenty four uh, hour, uh, mm. your twenty four hour podcast coming up on Sunday, uh, again for a very very good cause. Mm. But, but again, be a tough gig for you. Mm, but you know, because you hold down full time jobs as well, and mm. you and you're still giving so much back to the community. And and I think that I think that's important. And I think the reason you do it is is very much similar to myself. There is some really good people out there. Oh, yeah. Jesus, you know, it is, it is a part of the world that, um, um, uh, truth be told, it wouldn't have been a part of the world that I would have been in mm -hmm. or thought about coming into mm. until I arrived at, at Bali Buffet. Uh, but being out and around the county and seeing it. it mm. uh, some county. Oh, Jesus. Ah, the people, uh, some there. places. Do you think the stadium will be built in Little Kennedy? No, I think the stadium will be built in Little it's not Bill. It's, that's so that's the one that started fifteen years ago. There's sheep on it. <laughs> There's not even sheep, sheep on it. Park. 
<laughs> no, there's them big hern. Don't mark to me, right? There's them big hern crowns in Finn Park. So there is the big birds. Oh Jesus! How the size of the big things? You see the size of them, man. Harry oh, Potter. I, so, train the night, sir. You see them walking about the middle of the pitch. Michael like. Leary's trying to hire one, sir. Yes. <laughs> he's he's going to sell seats. Hey? He's going to sell seats. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> it's, it'll be in it'll be in uh, it'll be in Stranoller. That that's where it'll be. You know. Uh, there's a big push coming up about the new scheme to try and get more members. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic idea. It, it gives people a, a say in, in how the football club is going to be run for very, very little money. Huh? That will be launched very soon. And then, obviously, they've got their big dinner this weekend. Uh, Saturday, the, the 70th anniversary dinner is, is this weekend. And again, Denise O'Neill is the one organising that, and she's done a really, really good job. And it's all them types of people, all the volunteers. Mm. All the work that they do. Where's that on Jackson's or? It's in the Villa Rose. Villa Rose. It's in the Villa Rose. It's their their seventieth uh, anniversary. It's a legacy dinner. So to be going seventy years, uh, me know what I've known this last twelve months. I, I don't know how they've done it every single year. You know. Yeah. It's a phenomenal amount of money that it takes to run a football Jesus, club. Jesus, isn't it? In fairness, when you when you look at you know our position where we are, when you take travel costs. Then we have housing costs. We, we we have two houses. We used to have four. We now only have two. We have two houses for the players. Then you have the players' wages. Then you have the staff wages. What do you mean two houses? So we have a house in Letterkenny, in Meadow Hill, where five players stay in. And then we have a house in uh, Woodlawn and Stenholler, where four players stay in. So nine of the players that are in our panel stay in, stay in them houses. You know, That are from down the country and yeah, vice from, versa. Yeah, one from Scotland, two from England. Three from Dublin, uh, with two from Scotland actually, and then one from Germany. So it, we, it's quite a, quite a wide mm. spread. So they're, they're they're in them houses that used to be we had four, mm. now we've only two again. Cost eleven because the the club obviously acquires the costs of the houses. You know the players mm. don't don't have to. to it's tough, isn't it? Hey? It's a tough. lot of people don't know that we in like a lot of people are watching maybe or up to from Park or watch it in the League Iron TV, but watch it from first minute to ninety minute they don't see. Then we fucking butts like and what has to be done. No. Even though, even trying to like we went through a really difficult period there where we couldn't get the floodlights. Oh, that's and right. I know a lot of people uh, again were hugely critical of the people in the club, you know, how hard can it be to get bulls? Mm. Gotta remember that these floodlights are nearly I don't know, twenty one even fucking like, they know. old they are. Uh, like that's right, uh, during the summer there. Uh, yeah. they went to I don't know how many companies they tried. Like a lot of people out there don't know this. There was lights delivered to Finn Park that the companies we spoke to promised, yep, these are the right bulbs. Once they arrived, then you went to put them in. There was the wrong mm. bulb and you just send them Did back. you speak to Park? Park's a couple of bulbs there. <laughs> no, we no, playing a lorry. But again, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cost that we need to try and do something about because once we get the heavy rain, come January, February, March, April, the, the water will run back into the lights again. The bulbs will go out, and then we're back to trying re- to resource resource the lights. So it's money, it? it's a crazy amount of money. Like the lights this year, you're you're, you're talking well over ten, ten fifteen thousand euro just to replace bulbs and and get the lights working at stuff. You know, so it's there's all there's a lot of hidden costs. You know, and, and as I say, mm. that, that that's not that's the toughest part of it. You know, when when it's easy. You know, I I I'm I'm a wee bit old school. And I think maybe that's why some people like me and some people don't. You know, coaches coach, players play, managers manage, supporters should support. That's why they're called supporters. Mm. <laughs> that's why you've all basically got the title. And yeah. The, the thing about us, the 99.9% of our supporters are magnificent and they understand where we are and why we are and why we've went down the path we have went down. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm giving the young talent at Donegal a chance. <coughs> Exactly. It's interesting uh, when we come in there watching the TV, not Forest and Crystal Palace, like we have the two young boys mm. who are at Forest for 10 days. The two of them are sitting in that ground tonight. I spoke to both of them. Are they? Oh, I spoke to Just... both of them before I, I for, on my way here and they're both in they're both in the ground watching a Premier League game. They both right. trained this morning. We're not Trials, sure. is it? Uh, uh, they're over for 10 days. Uh, both trained this morning, Galvin McAteer and, and Oshin Cooney and they've the, the who's who? I know Gavin. My who's our keeper? He's a goalkeeper hmm. and show him. Uh, he's only just turned seventeen, so he was net, he was net, wasn't he? The he was last couple of games. He's played the last nine or ten games. Yeah, ten, ten was injured, wasn't he? Oh, you have to be as a goalkeeper. You're different. Yeah, yeah. you have to be different. So he, uh, he, he, them two kids, and they're not the only two. We have had we have had so many more. You know, it was the first time in a long time we had four 
we had four clubs at, at Finn Park, four scouts at Finn Park on Friday night, you know, with Brighton, uh, Notts Forest, Everton uh, and Derby. Do they Kentuck. tell you they're coming? Yeah. They, they do? Yeah, uh, we knew they were coming because... You know, scouts don't pay in there. They're looking for free tickets. <laughs> oh, they're like, he's like Marty. Mm. So, oh, was there any of them at the charity game, Murph? No, no, no. Didn't get any requests that day. No, sorry. Yeah, that's my other album. I mean, swooped. Swooped, eh? <laughs> fucking <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Avers' ears. Uh, don't even be fucking backing them up, Murph. The fuck. Come here, young Macket here. Um, what, what's he having in his locker that uh, changed for you? Just a special talent, you know, he, Again, a, a bit like us, you know, very confident young man, you know. Uh, I heard he's very vocal for the age he is. You're only 16. Coming on demanding. Oh, 16? Uh, he's just turned 16. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to take any of the credit. I'll take maybe a wee tiny bit, but I'm not going to take any of it. You know, the work that's been done with Gavin was done long before he come to me. Mm. It only it, The only thing that's helped Gavin is that he actually has somebody that doesn't worry about age and just looks at ability. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it, lots of people stand up and say, I'm going to give youth the chance and I'm going to do it. It's easy to do, it's easy to say that. The hardest thing is to go and back it up. You know, when you're walking out in the League of Ireland first division game and you're going, at, this, at that stage he's 15 and you're going, right, I'm going to play him. It, that's the hardest part, you know. It is hard, eh? and, and, and you know, whereas maybe in, in the past you went and got another player, you know, we have, we have promoted from it, from within, we've tried to do that. There'll be years we get three or four. There'll be years we mightn't get any, and that's just the way it works. But you know what I wanted to do was make sure that the club is in a much better place. Mm. You know, moving forward, that structurally it, it has the right structures in place that when it does go up the next time, it's ready to go up and stay up. And you know, I think we've started that small steps of that, and I think now the club are they know where they're going, whereas in previous years, yes, it was brilliant. And as, and I've said this quite openly, Ali done a brilliant job. He got three promotions, but to gain the three promotions, you have to have three relegations. So mm. there's a very lot of instability when you're going up and down and mm. up and down. And, and, and that's difficult because you spend lots of money to get up and then you t spend more money to try and stay up and then your yeah. debt's bigger than it was before you went up. Yeah. Whereas now it's about trying to get that, that, that stability. So I think moving forward, if, if, if there's a new head coach in place, it'll be more the football club will be picking somebody that fits what they want to do yeah. instead of somebody coming in and saying, I want to do this and this is how I want to do it. Yeah. And I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Do you think it, uh, I don't know, this may be a stupid question, do you think it's nearly better for the club to stay in the league they are rather than go up? Look, it as he be, says, and come straight back. Not very ready to go up, was it? Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, uh, it's not a stupid question. It's like, there's no point you going up knowing you're going straight back down and you have to rebuild again. Would you not rather stay around until you th you think you're strong enough? If we had, a, you know, you're I hear it's you're hundred percent right, Marty. If 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 we had went to the playoffs and won the playoffs and went up as a football club, we're, we're not ready. We're not ready for that, Sam. Uh... And we, we because a we don't have the ground. Mm -hmm. We don't have a ground to sustain the Premiership crowd that you would like to come to Finn Park. You know we. We don't have the modern day facilities that opens the ground up to everyone. Uh, financially, we wouldn't have the money to compete. We just would not have the money. And it could do the young players a lot more harm than it could do good. Mm. Where even though they've lost games this year, they've been competitive in the games. And I feel moving forward, that'll, that's very good for them. And I feel they'll be competitive again next year. Mm. But what it is that what the, I know, every, I know what the supporters want. I'm, I'm not. I'm not naive enough or green enough not to know that. But I do think that, as I say, quite a few of them understand what the club are trying to do. So the next time that they do go up, it won't be that honeymoon period of up for a season and down. Yeah, it's exactly. nearly better for the club to stay be in yeah. consistent there. and Because you want to build off the pitch yeah. as every much as you want to build on mm. it. And as I say, the, the key to it all is the mm. new stadium. That is, that is the key to it all. Uh, and when that eventually gets going everything's in place it's yeah. just about getting everything now signed off and, mm -hmm. and getting ready but everything's there you know how the club are going to raise the money to get the money that they need up for the shortfall it's all there yeah it's just getting everybody around the table and everybody to agree and then you know move on you know mm -hmm. and, and i would I, I i i probably said at the dinner and on, on saturday night if we if we don't all do that we certainly won't have an, another 70 years. Uh, and that's not that 
That's fact. Mm. It's fact. That's there's no point mean. fucking beating around. No, no, there's no point. Um, what's your relationship with the fans? Uh, I would like to think it's a good one. Uh, I'm not one of these. I'm choose my words carefully here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of these. Come out and you know, give it the big clap and the big roar and uh. when our team scores and I'm running out onto the pitch and I'm I'm not that t- I'm not that mm. type of guy. You know, when reserved. We score, I I am even when we score. You know. I, Sometimes I take my hands out of my pocket, sometimes I don't. Because I, I just focus on what I do. You know, I would I would like to think that the majority of them look at it and go, well, I tell you what, we were in a much, much better place. Like last year, our goal difference was minus 35. It's, it's minus three this year. So it's, it's, different it's a distinct improvement. You know, we have won more games this year than we did last year. We have... Uh, Got more points than we did mm. this time last year. We finished sixth, or we finished ninth and tenth in the previous two seasons. Mm. So see, people don't see them different stats. There are only we small, and that's mm. only small regressions. Everyone looks at the part of the season where we lost six games in a row, and uh, five of them were away from Finn Park. Mm. Out of the six, and out of the five, four of them were out of the, four out of the five were the longest journeys. It's going. It was always going to take its toll somewhere oh, along the geez. line. So. And you, you're never going to go the whole season without mm. a bump in the road. And our bump in the road came at a time where it just came at the wrong time. But the same people that spoke about us losing six in a row then didn't speak about the fact that we then went unbeaten six in a row, winning four and drawing two. Right. <laughs> so again, you, yeah, that's why I don't... Won my brother. No, that's why I don't get emotionally too high. And I no. certainly don't get it must be hard high. not to get emotionally, though, because it's such up and down. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Ah, it can be, but but again, it was, I I promised myself if ah. if, I, if I got like that, I would mm. you know I would just I would I would just walk out of it because ah, it's no good because ah. you're you're not thinking straight and you're not the person that you want to be. You know, I remember sitting down with the chairman when it was announced as manager, and he said, "Look, you'll be here for two years, possibly three. We'll get the contract sorted out." And the contract was sent through to me, and I didn't sign it. And then he was, "Have you signed that yet?" And I was like. You know, I, I, I'm fine, and I don't need to sign it. I'm quite comfortable, and and mm. and, I, and I still haven't signed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it must be that I'd say I'm the only League of Ireland manager out of the twenty that started the season. By the way, all of my own choice, not the clubs. The clubs mm. were very good, and the contract was there, but, but I hadn't signed it, and I just sort of thought, sure, I'll just, I'll, I'll, mm. I'll just go onward, and because that always in the back of my mind that if I was going to let it affect me. And, and and be that emotionally high person mm. and rant and rave and fall out with people and all that, then I would just go, it ain't for me. No, but that hasn't been the case. So, uh, as I say, then you, you just sit down now and, and, and see what see what you, you, you want to do. You know, I know what, you know, lots of things going on in my head. I have to process, obviously, dad and stuff like that. You mm. know. Take time out and yeah, well, it, you have it, to mourn too. Like, it's just, the strange thing about it is it, it, it helps you, mm. but it hinders you. In that way, you know, mm. m- my father died on su- a Sunday. His funeral was a Wednesday, and I was in the home d- home dugout on the Friday. So I mean, you you're not g- sometimes <laughs> you don't get time to mourn. No, and I, and I certainly and that, that can affect you. It can, and, and you know, from the eighth of September to the eighteenth of October, my staff got me through that. You know, because there were a new certain days when I come to train, and I was maybe feeling a wee bit low, mm. and they were able to pick me up. And the players were good at that too, and the people around the club. Mm. And that period from the eighth of September right through to the eighteenth of October, again, as 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 you know, I, I thanks is doesn't even seem enough. You know what I mean? Mm, it, yeah. The support I got and the the ends that people went to, you know, and that's what makes this decision very difficult for yeah. me mm. because it, it it's a decision that, you know, it, it, I'd be internally grateful to, to them people. You know, yeah. I certainly will. You said there uh, that the. Uh, such good players and all they've been there for you what's your relationship like with the players uh, I, I, brilliant I think they look at me and think you know the, the realise from right from day one you know what I said to them at day one it's been the exact same at, at the very end you know mm. uh, when Jerry Early organised the trip to Iron Moor and, and we had that bonding weekend in Iron Moor mm. and the players could see me I could see them they could see you know it was it was an open transparent 
weekend over here. Open orgy. <laughs> <laughs> well, not normal. <laughs> uh, although well, it was, it was, it was a mind blowing. Tug your man to the right. Did you? Yeah, uh... it's a mind blowing experience. But mm, no, I have it. to say, I, 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 the, the players, you know, I think they know where me. Uh, family comes first, you know. So oh, yeah. players have had so many different issues this year, and some of the staff have had issues this year, and and they feel very comfortable in coming to me and saying, "Murph, I maybe need tonight off, or I maybe need a week off, or I maybe need that," and and I'm quite comfortable in that because yeah. at the end of the day, they have to be right up here mm. to perform to the best of their level, and that's the same at both at staff level and at players level. So I think the relationship is one of respect, and and, and that's not just one way; that's both ways. I respect and each and every one in the changing room. And I think they know that, and I think that's 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 been the the cornerstone of the way we have done so well mm -hmm. because there is a real tight knit, knit group in there, and we 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 do have a bit of banter with each other. And again, because I'm quite comfortable in laughing at myself as long as laughing with myself and somebody else, yeah, it makes it easier. On that note, we'll take a wee break here because Murph's dying for shade. I can smell his fart. <laughs> 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 Mira, thanks to this week's sponsor too by the way just to give you a wee, wee, wee recap on that power tea putters I was too lost to get down and play in it but uh, thanks very much to the sponsor we'll be back after the break and then <laughs> turn blank <laughs> oh, oh. Christ, hey. how you doing folks welcome back to episode 56 of the V&M podcast, podcast. Um, as you can see, we're still joined by our special guest. He hasn't Mark. went yet. <laughs> he hasn't left yet. He hasn't left yet, don't I? Mm. Uh, special shout out to this week's sponsor, Party Putters. Check them out on Instagram for all your party putting needs. That was nice. Ching, ching, ching. I like that wee putt. Murph, next question me and Marty want to ask you is what is the best thing about the Fun Herbs job? Uh, Do you think yourself? What's the best? Yeah, getting some of the opportunities that I've got this year that I never thought of, I would have, you know. Things like this. Coming on a podcast. Yeah. No, no, seriously, coming ching, on the ching. podcast. Uh, the fashion show. Uh, mm. The night we done the fashion show. That was, was a good crack night. I enjoyed good, that night. Good banter. Uh, getting to see different we haven't been We haven't been asked to do anything so. How long have I it? Just before you go any further. Um, we, me and Marty might just talk about this ourselves. How bad of a singer is he? Oh, bad, sir. Do you know that there's a clip on our podcast that I haven't given out about you? How bad a singing you are? Remember that time we done our... Uh, the Christmas single, yeah. There's a clip on her anger, must show it to you. And I'm like, No, nah, but it's anger, was worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was bad, she ballooned up that night, yeah. didn't she? <laughs> she looked, she Party sounded on. like a, a Romanian got split well, was <laughs> not? Uh, uh, <laughs> off a lorry, no, lucky. And that's another thing that was a great night. Aye, Christmas, the Christmas, Sweet the world. <laughs> uh, all them things that you know. Uh, what other the Blue Stack Foundation you mm, know, a chance to lo launch that jersey and, and be their partner and, and stuff like that getting to see different parts of, of, of Donegal uh, like the Secret Waterfall like going that and you know nobody uh, knows where it's at yeah, it was good to see well, a secret but I, when I went it, uh, I was following it you know on Google Maps and just like was standing at the wee you know the wee top name like where is this fucking waterfall? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I had to stop one of the locals and they said, you need to walk the whole way down to that beach. I thought, fuck. So I walked the whole way down. The tide was in. <laughs> so I ended up, I met, the, met these three foreign people and they, they said to me, uh, it's around here, Darren. Around here. That's a good accent there. <laughs> I don't know. Around here, Darren? Where are they from, Cobble? <laughs> I don't know. It's around here, Darren. Uh, but I, I, uh, uh, so it says, come on, you, you, you can come. So I was like, I don't care. So I actually swam round the <laughs> swam right. You round, swam around it round to get into the secret waterfall, and then I was standing there and I was going to say nobody's going to be able to know I was here. So I actually had to ask one of them to take a photograph. <laughs> I stand the secret waterfall, take a photograph. So uh, them times I remember them. Uh, the food, some of the food. Has, Do you have that photo actually? <laughs> photos up on Instagram there. Right? I got ripped for it. Park. I got ripped for it. <laughs> and put it Joe the Walson the ball out a castaway put oh. it the side <laughs> I thought to be honest I thought they were taking the piss out of him they said the tides in we're going to have to swim but no we did and to be fair when I got round to it it was beautiful and then stopped in Killy Beggs 
as well and got some lovely fish. Fish and chip out of oh, the chip pan. Hey, oh, it was Champions That's League. That's lovely. I never had it, but it's lovely. Oh, it was Champions <laughs> League. Lovely. So I reckon salt and vinegar uh, hanging off it. Oh, it was oh. stuck the roof of your mouth for three days after. The coleslaw was the big tub of coleslaw. That so. wet like a dolphin's oh. pussy. <laughs> It smells like a dolphin, uh, does it? Do? It was, it was <laughs> honestly them types of things. And then again, the people like, uh, and, and obviously, you know, the, the, the people that have met in the hotel and stuff like that, the, the girls and the staff and all that look after mm. me. And you know, the banter that I have in there. And again, it, it's just it, them types of things you, would, you wouldn't do as a player and you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do just as an assistant manager or mm. coach. But obviously, in my role, you get the, you get the invites and. I, I like the crack and mm. <clears throat> I like, as I say, getting out there and, and having a bit of a laugh. But, you know, the, the blue stack probably is the one that has really stood out for me, you know, because it getting across to where they're based and spending a couple, I've been there three or four times, and yeah. spending time there. Yeah. It's absolutely un unbelievable the work they do. And, and, you know, the one thing I'd love to, is you know for people to can just keep continuing supporting that foundation mm. because it's just it's just remarkable you know when you go up go around there and by the way they do great food over there too do they? the food's magnificent they do they cook themselves down the back of a wee restaurant down the back and the food is mm. magnificent you're making me fucking hungry now <laughs> <laughs> to be so, fair all, all them things you're saying Murph's all fucking charity work too you're very good at charity work like mm -hmm. so fucking fair pity like because a lot of people not only wouldn't do a lot of stuff for not only a lot of people don't want to do stuff for the community, but especially when it's charity too. Like it's, it's a big fucking, it's a big help. Like I think you should always. I think you should be you should realize that you're fortunate. I'm oh. a very fortunate person to be in the head coach of Finn Harps. There's many a person out there who would want to do the job, and there's many a person who's done it before me. Mm. And I, I think it's a role that you know you're 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 in a very fortunate position. You know, and and you you do have the ability sometimes to influence people regards charity work or regards whatever. And again, as I said, it's very easy to stand and, and maybe put your face in the camera and support something. It's, it's 10 times harder to actually physically go and do it. You know, even up until recently, just the swim in pink, you know, mm, yeah. along with Patty and Tanya, you mm -hmm. know, and, and they asked me to come along and I was like, aye, aye I'll do it. Aye. And then I remember driving up a couple of Sundays ago there, driving up the road and it was fucking three degrees in the car and I'm thinking to myself Jesus fuck that the tax party and said I've never done this before he says yeah, well you're right on at the deep end and I certainly was like but I, see once it had done and all I felt I felt great, felt great you know because yeah, it, you're, you're yeah. doing something good for, for you know but as you say it's so easy when, when he texts us saying oh would you come it's so easy saying yes doing it's the fucking other thing like that's the hardest right? thing you know even yeah. the fashion show yeah you know the night of the fashion show it's, it's easy ah uh, yep I'll do it, but when you're actually having there. to do it and do it, yeah. Uh, in front of everybody. Dressed as a woman. What's the, what's woman. the worst part? The traveling. Well, the traveling can be, the traveling can be difficult at times. The worst, the, the worst part of it at, at times is sometimes you, you, you put so much effort in and, and something, something happens that's beyond your control. Uh, and, and that can be the toughest part of it. You know, getting a phone call on a Friday morning, you know, I can't play or getting a phone call. Them things that you just can't control. Yeah. I've, I've hand and heart, you know, outside them, we small types of things. There's nothing about it I haven't enjoyed. And, you know, uh, I've enjoyed the experiences of winning games. Uh, even though we've lost games, it, it, I've still, it hasn't been something that's beat me up. I've, I've, I've enjoyed being involved in the match mm. day experience, win, lose or draw. Mm. So there's very little in the job that, that I haven't enjoyed. And there's, there, there's not very too many parts of it that, that I haven't been able to cope with. And I think that's the big thing for me. You know, I'll be 50 in January, believe it or not. Uh, and, you know, I've learned a lot in this last year. So that, that, yeah. that's that been the big thing for me. You're going to have a fat, big 50th birthday party or what? I doubt it. No, it'll not Why? be down to me. That'll be down to the wife, like, if she right. wants to spend the money, like, but to be fair to her, she's tightening her strings, like, so. <laughs> 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 I'd, say, I'd say the big 50th birthday will be me, her mother-in-law, her and my son. <laughs> hey, T. I go to the top here. That's about, that's about, I'll, I'll go, sorry, that's just great. That's a great call there. That was another thing that... Oh, I was, so you went up the Ergel? I went to, went to the top of Ergel. Uh, it was, uh, everyone was saying to me, I'll be, it'll be handy. Tell you what, it's hard enough going up it. It fucking is. Coming down is worse. It is, actually, because you're just constantly... You're just constantly on your calves. But uh, no, it was good. What an experience that was.
Um, mm. I think a big rave for your 50th in Fun Park. <laughs> Fun Park, yeah. Imagine that. Ash Bash, Dita Rave. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I meant to ask you, Murph, see the feeling. Um, I coached Michelle there, oh, like, obviously not on the level you're at, but um, I coached Michelle. Sorry, they're fucking flying a bit there. <laughs> I coached Lag and Harps, actually. We won Division 2, won the league. I was 16 stone, I still won it. You're good to yourself saying 16 stone, but... Um, oh, that's harsh. Um, there's nothing better seeing something, working on something at training and seeing it coming together on a Sunday or a Friday. As in, what, like, what kind of feeling is that? Like, I know I got it at that low level, but, like, it must be, mad, like, a lot bigger at that level. I can know here, when when you win games of football, there, there, is a, there is a feeling about it because you know that you're sending X amount of people home happy. Yeah. People that have worked hard all week, they've come to the game on a Friday night, you've played well, you've won the game, and you can feel the buzz in Finn Park, and you know you're sending mm. them people all home happy. Some buzz that. That, that, that is... You know, you, yeah, that is that's that that that's you, you feel you do feel good within yourself because the people that have worked hard all week even to get the game on, mm. you see how happy they are. You know, and that there does play a part in it. There's no there's no doubt you can yeah. see that. You see the enjoyment in people's faces. You know, we have a younger crowd this year as well, so you know the players always interacting with the kids at the end of the games and stuff like that is mm. brilliant as well. So that part of the job, no, it is you. You get a real you get a real good buzz out of that. You do. Because you know you've made so many people happy. Yeah. You know, you've done very little to do that. But there was a time, um, we like we worked in a set piece one time and, and the, the first time we tried it, there was a free kick at the age of box every and you line up as you're gonna shoot and then you take a chart or whatever. And the first time we tried it it worked. And I never I swear to God, standing on the sideline watching it work. Like you do it on a Thursday and then it comes together on a Sunday, I'm like some feeling high. I don't know, I can't really describe the feeling of it, but I think I think it's because you in fo- in football you spend so much time with each other, you know, as a group. Yeah. So, as you say, when you do something on the training pitch and it transforms from the training pitch to the match, and it goes exactly the way you wanted it to go. Yeah. It's it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, you just you, you, it is a word. It is hard to really get, to describe. There's probably another wee person inside you, and he's jumping about with yeah. joy. Like, but you can't really show that. You know that that emotion where you're. Yes, uh, you know one of them. We once yes, yes, yes like <laughs> Christmas. That, that was us. That was us. You, know, I think that that part of it's inside, and you get that feeling, like you know, yeah. it, and you get the buzz in the changing room. Mm-hmm. Then as well after the game, you know, people say to me, "What will you miss the most?" Without question, and the the, the thing I miss the most is the changing room. Because mm-hmm. you know, that's your sanctuary. You, you see the know. men washing. Ah, uh, you see men washing. And all that, <laughs> all that crack. See, yeah, I see that bass in the changing room. Hey. Uh, like after a game he'd come in and he'd be standing with his willy between his legs like playing <laughs> as a girl <laughs> no what here it's, it's different now because the modern generation of footballer aren't mm. like we were in our day nah. do you know what I mean it was like if you, yeah. signed, if you signed a new player hey boy hurry up and get them after you get a look at you <laughs> 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 it's, know, it's, it's sometimes it's all about the crack you need a bit of crack in the change room too so especially when you have young players it's to make them feel at ease if well, you know what I mean? There's no Not showing you the, the, your cock or anything like that. Oh, no. You as do mean, want... having a bit of crack and takes the nerves off them a bit. It does, but what you find with the younger player now is that they're social, social media driven. Mm. You know, so mm, yeah. it, it, that's, that's a big, that's probably the biggest change in the game. Social media, you know, they all want to look at themselves and, mm. you know, they all, you know, want to see how they dress. You know, uh, they all... <laughs> TikTok guy, they're all. It's all. It's Where do you hear that? Oh. <laughs> Margaret had a package on for, and it was a vibrator. <laughs> no, but Margaret was buzzing for months after right. she got it. Then I wonder because she had stuck in between her two laps down south. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Keep that. Uh, clap it, champ. No, but that's that is social media is the big thing. Yeah, they just want to look at themselves. Mm. They want to speak about themselves. Same as in the gym, like. But uh, I think the young ones are more gym gym driven than drink. And our times are. It's how they look. Uh, you know, it, it is how they look. They all mm. want to look the, the best. They all want to mm. see what gear each one's yeah. wearing, what shoes you got on, what top you're right. wearing, what's your haircut like. You know, mm. it's all. It's all. This is actually fake. It's not fake, actually. Is it? Let's get over this. Many years ago, that now P two. It's not fake. I can see from here. No, it's not fake. It is. Uh, no, it's not fake. What's your reaction? Hair? hair off me, Uncle's right. ball bag. <laughs> mm. uh, no, so and you got smells. And he had AIDS too. Oh, oh man, he had AIDS. Uh. <laughs> he was going with David Boy's son. 
in England. <laughs> ah, I swear is, that God, that. is that the truth? That's the truth. <laughs> I'm a bad liar. Uh, oh, fuck. Come here. <laughs> who, who was your football needle when you were younger? You were left back, were you? Yeah, I, uh, football needles growing up, probably Kenny Daglish would have been right up there. You know. you a Liverpool fan? I am. Why do you can smell? This is, this is, this is. I am. Quigley, where you at? Not cute. Uh, no. I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> He is, oh, he is too. He is, he is. He's a Liverpool fan, is right. Oh. No, so people like that, like Leash, obviously, you, you were brought up on the Liverpool team then that was winning the league titles and mm. you know, John Barnes and you know people like that. It was, it was great. John Barnes, eh? Uh, it was They're great. kind of it was just great. before my era. Both right, okay. <laughs> You're younger than me now. <laughs> oh, before my era? No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Steve, uh, asked, is that all wrong? Uh, Stephen Gerrard and Fat Ronaldo probably were mine. I well, I remember them too. It's inter- that's, that's that's another Ronaldo. thing. He we, was different gravy. He together. was, you know. It's interesting because you know we talk about obviously me and some of the older players and, and and maybe some of the older staff talk about iconic moments in the game. And I was I was sitting talking about you know Rude Hulot scoring in the nineteen eighty eight hmm. European Championship finals, and you're looking around the changing room and they're all like half and like he, half yeah. and Rude Hulot. So you know it just well, I know it's bloppy. <laughs> 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 you know, I was talking like young Gavin McAteer is is only sixteen, like so he was born in well twenty twenty four. Take that away. I thought she was born in twenty twenty four. You bad math, man. Is one? No, it's tw- like two thousand and eight. Like he was, or uh, two thousand and eight. He was born like I retired. I retired from playing it by two thousand and five. <laughs> <laughs> He was. He, he, wasn't even, uh, he wasn't even born. No he thought it was a fucking uh, cereal in Africa. He, that's amazing. They don't. But they don't. Cereal. <laughs> they don't. The kids don't. They don't. You know that when you talk about so many, the, you know, great players, they just look at you. That's funny. Like you forget yourself. Like uh, Messi and Ronaldo. Cristiano, or what they talk about now. You're talking about you know, don't, they don't. Do you know what? I, do you know what I asked you in a fucking TikTok or are you on about TikTok here? Ronaldinho was different gravy too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was oh, I unbelievable. We were, we were, I was blessed as a, mm. a young man coming up in the generation of football that you had then. Fuck. Some of the players that you watched, you know, from mm. Austin and and yeah. who, Ronaldinho, and as you said, the fat Ronaldo, the fat Ronaldo, he was hard, Batistuta, fucking Zidane. Del Piero. Oh, all them. See, I remember any any yes, that oh, Xavi. Xavi. Oh. You know, they, they, we were blessed with the generations of footballers. Fuck. They're now they look at you. Who? Who the fuck you are know, they? Go and watch it there. Go and watch it, you see. So mm. they, that, that, that part of it there is... I have a question for you. Does Van Dijk win the all-time Liverpool 11? He does for me. Like, personal, like, he's fucking like something to be fair. He's that calm. He's like a Rolls Royce, isn't he? Really? Well, when you think about when Celtic bought him for 4 million or whatever it was for next to nothing and then Southampton bought him for 12 and everybody thought or whatever they lost a plot. And yeah. Then Liverpool paid, what, 70 for him? 70, and he, even at 70 million when you look at some of the some of the, the the money that's been spent on other players in the game around mm. that time. More that's than cheap. Him, that, that's cheap. Yeah. For what you've got back in return, you know. So, no, he, I felt my all-time favourite Liverpool player probably is is Gerard. Like, although Gerard, Dag Leach would be, Dag Leach would be up there, but oh, Gerard. Gerard was, he was something else. There's so many iconic moments. I would eat the foreskin clean half the back of a sack, hundred percent. There's so many iconic moments. You're thinking about that, are you? He is. Go sausage on him. Ah, he's a good player, but the whole debate about Lampard, Jared, and Scholes, like, never. That's never going to be. Because every because you're talking about three, you're talking about three of probably the, the best of their generation yeah. at the time they played and everybody will have a different opinion mm-hmm. on each one Liverpool exactly. fans will all go for Gerard. Chelsea but fans you know what hey I'm a United fan and someone said something and it made sense to be fair Mason Greenwood I think if you put what was it I don't think Scholes or Lampard would have been able to do what Gerard done if they put them on the Liverpool team he played with Lampard and, no. Lamp, Lampard and Scholes probably played with better players. 
because of the domination. That's what I mean. Yeah. See that if you put mm. them two under the under the squads of Gerard. Gerard carried the Liverpool team. Is that what you're saying? More or less. Not really. Not carried it, but he, he played with some good players too, like Suarez. Yeah, that's that's well, he, Suarez. He won, like he, he won them the FA Cup when you go back to Cardiff in the Millennium Stadium. We're when they're getting beat by West Ham. The wonder goes the like 25 yards, 30 yards. Olympiacus. Olympiacus, but then he goes on and scores the header. But your AC pushed them. Yeah, so the Champions League final wouldn't happen without Jared. Like, I'll tell you one thing, you know, uh, see Suarez and his prime in Liverpool. I've never seen anybody like that. He's a different fucking animal too. But Definitely. Yeah, you, know, you were, you were just a mank. Yeah, Rata. You, were just, you were blessed. Like even thing, Torres was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Pace, power, everything was good. You know, so it's it's different. The games, the game's different now. Like the game. Jimmy Drury. He played in the Champions League final. Selling fucking fidget spinners outside yeah. Santa Ponza. There's two, there's two players that people forget started that Champions League final. Funny. Right? And yeah. he was useless. He left. What do you call the boy, actually? He was an Australian. He scored. No, he didn't score. He was an Australian. Harry Kuehl. Harry Kuehl. What do you call a oh. half foot scored and he's shite you? Um, Vladimir Schmitzer. Vladimir Schmitzer. Bang. Under the bottom Him, corner. Him, Alonso and Gerard scored the... Alonso must have penalty and tapped it on. Tapped it in. I was not... Or Glenn Curran that night. Oh, yeah. Fucking starting to get hard thinking about it. Like. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to move on. <laughs> uh, move on from my hard on, or move on to a different question. Um, <laughs> our favourite manager on today's game. It's a tough one, like. So, yeah, yeah. Arnold Slot. Uh, no, you'd have to say Guardiola, because I know people say he's had he's had the money. Check bastards. But when you look at, at the rest of the teams, they've all spent. Nice, nice. So much money, but they haven't got the end product that he's got. So, mm. considering that he, and he's done it at Barcelona, he's done the Bayern Munich, and now he's done it at City. Mm. You know, he has to be up there. Mm -hmm. I was thinking you would say that when I thought of that question. That team, like, I thought you would have said Guardiola. That team he has there, they won it again this year too. Like, mm. is P. I think they will anyway. Who? They won it again. No, they won't. What do you think that call at the weekend with Bernardo Silva? Do you think it was smart? From what he did, that's it. You can't disallow that. The thing about it is, I don't think there's too many people out there who wouldn't have realised that you can't be offside. You can't be offside. You from can't the be ball offside game. until the ball is, is hit, 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 hit towards phase. the goal, isn't it? And there's not a lot of teams working stuff like that. So it was very good at what he done. Like at the end of the day, he's a, sm a smart player. I hate him. I love the smash his face with Ryan fan. <laughs> Fucking hate the wee man. So even good player. Haircut, even the haircuts annoy me, man. Uh, but he's a good player. No, it was, it was, look, it's it a well worked goal, and it's definitely a goal that should have stood, and it did stand. And oh, he's hit him. See him when he never Just clapped. Liverpool. Liverpool. See him when he never clapped. Liverpool, mank. But it's fine, Mink. fine margins in the game now. So mm -hmm. set piece, like most clubs now have a set piece, piece coach. That's yeah. his job to, to defend and attack at set pieces. So I'm sure that even clap at a throw, throw in coach. Throw but I'm throw sure the attack and set piece coach at Manchester City was like we were when something goes off in the training pitch. Mm. He was like, yes, fuck it, right? You know what I mean? So it keeps him in the job for another month. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's the way it works. Tony Mark to me. Throw the ball as far as you can at the box. That's it. I don't, I'm Crouch headed on. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, uh, see if you're to go back now and tell an 18 year old you. What, what advice would you give him? Uh, what advice would I give him? Jesus. Don't masturbate before <laughs> training. No, what advice? <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I'd probably just give him the same advice that I give myself. Was it? Uh, make sure you maximize make sure you maximize the talent that you have and don't let it waste and and uh, work as hard as you can you know i do enjoy life but i made the right sacrifices at the right time to have as long a career as i did as a player and now still as a coach so i think it's you know there's a lot of people out there have the talent but unfortunately they don't maximize their talent because of what happens you know, they get sidetracked at a certain age and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so my advice would be be very focused and be single minded and make sure you maximize the talent that you've got because uh, you don't get a second chance at it. You know, once mm -hmm. it's gone, it's gone. You know, I was the same, retired a long time now as well. So, and um, it seems like yesterday, from I made my debut, that I quit playing the now and it, it goes mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye. And, and when you tell a young player that he looks at you thinking, uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Bye. Bye. right. Dead on, just because you're old. Yeah. <clears throat> it's only that they'd realise the seasons just go like that. Mm. You know, as we're talking about two kids. It's true. You know, Gavin McAteer made his debut at 15, he's now 16. This time next year, he was 17. Yeah. Um, because he's involved in the game at a top level, mm. 36 or 38 weeks out of the 52, you're in a game. So it just 
it, it, it seems to go, I know life doesn't go quicker, but because you're involved, it, it goes mm. quicker. Any regrets? Uh, none. Do you fight? No. Dirty manka. No, none. None. S- none. That's good. Uh, uh, certainly not. None. None. Uh, enjoyed my playing career. Enjoyed my time in the IFA. Loved my time in the Irish Football Association. It was, it was right up there. One of the best times I had in my career. I uh, got to see so many parts of the world. Uh, the hell of the highlight of it being going to the World Cup for four weeks in Russia. Well, in twenty eighteen was absolutely magnificent. It was, you know, something that I would never have done if I'd never been involved in the game. So yeah. Uh, no regrets whatsoever. None. There's none. I think if you've got regrets, then you made the wrong decision at the wrong time. I didn't have. I don't think I've made a wrong decision in the football thing. So no. It's no a good regrets. answer. Good answer. No. So good. Clear answer. What's next for Murph? Next is go. Uh, I'm going to Nats Forest at the start of next week to see the two lads. Class. They're playing a game on Tuesday. Then after that, what what were they playing for? Under twenty ones or eight? Under it'd probably be the under eighteens or under seventeens, one of the two. So they play against Huddersfield in a game next Tuesday. So I'm, I'm going to watch the two boys. You don't know if they'll start her. No, but I'll be there anyway. I, I would say there's a strong possibility both will start because they're over on trial. So mm, to see what they're like. See what they're like. So what you never answered the question, actually, Margaret here. What does he have that just everything? Just he has that technical ability. You know, he he's very comfortable in the football. Uh, he, he slipped into the environment very easily, uh, even though he's a very young man. He's got a very old head and his shoulders, and he's got two old players in and around him, and McNamee and Collie, who he, he he listens to and he absorbs stuff. He's a wee bit like a sponge. He's like a sponge, takes it all in. Takes it all in, so you know it, that's the part for him. Then after Notch Forest, it'll be uh, come home, take a bit of a break. Take a break uh, speak, Holidays? Speak, maybe, don't know, depends. Uh, speak to my wife. Sit down with her. She's obviously been by my side. Too long. Nineteen ninety eight. Mm. I nearly mm. don't, can't say it too long. Like, but <laughs> no, she's been there from from where going. At, and you know anything that I've done, she's always been one that I've had to I I I speak to about. So I'll speak to her about it, and then I'll, I'll make a decision very quickly and on on what's on what's what's best. And it'll not be what what's best for everyone, not just me. You know, if I feel that I can make more progression with the football from club. last year from last year then no exclusives then no, no exclusives no exclusives not yet waste, no. waste of time the whole thing's a waste of time cut delete everything <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's 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 where it is you know uh, I haven't had time to do that yet and I'll get time next week and, and stuff like that and then you know speak to the people that I've worked with as well see what their thoughts on what's their, what's their plans stay, what's their plans uh, because at the end of the day we were all a package Mm-hmm. So we were, you right. know, and uh, like if you lose, and his package. if you lose parts of it, that's it, mm-hmm. you know. So we have to, we have to assess that part of it, and then uh, take it from there. Take it from there, but no, if if it, it, I can't honestly say enough. I've, I've, I've absolutely loved it, and the reason I've been here, as I say, from December twenty twenty two, so when it went so quick, but, uh, then you know so you spent in there two years at. We got, ah, hasn't it? Right, one, no. Yeah. I thought I would only think you were there for a year. No, when Dave Rogers walked uh, in, Dave and brought Roger, me in, Dave brought right. me in as his number two, oh, two years ago, and then obviously the one year as a, as a head coach. But being at the club, football club for two years, like, has mm. been has been magnificent. Mm. Um, we asked each guest at the every at the end of every podcast three. There's very... no point asking that question. The next season's goals, unless you're playing Aster. Because you've no qu- you know answers for us because you don't know what you're doing yet. So no, I can't ask them. I'd say what's next for Murph, and you just ruined it. So at the end of every podcast, Murph, we asked our guest um, three very important questions. What? Take the- your pants down to measure your foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> we do that to every fan. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ, <laughs> what is your favorite takeaway? Not no. Oh yes, it's not. Everyone says Chinese. No, definitely not. Favorite takeaway would have to be, I would be quite fond of uh, Indian. Don't tell, ask me which. <laughs> Cut that out. Oh, out. Right, right, get that out, champ. Uh, Name forty two. Sorry. No. What's your what's your order? I like a chicken karma, like because it's in, I like the and a uh, uh, personality nam. 
I like the coconut in it. So uh, what do you call it? Persani Nam bread. Persani Nam bread. bread eh? That's a wee bit of coconut in it. Wee bit of coconut. Aye. Nice. Burning. <laughs> <laughs> so and then what would your second takeaway be? Uh, On the... ooh, uh, I would like I like chicken uh, chicken wings, deep fried chicken wings. Oh, that's uh, a first. That's a nice. I like take away the yolk. That'd be fair. Is it like, like, the chicken? No, no, deep, deep fried chicken wings. I love it. I love a deep fried chicken wings. Like mm. out of anywhere. The batter in them. Oh, I has to. Charcoal does a nice. Has bit. to be oh, battered. That's a first there, to be fair. Has to be battered. I wouldn't. Don't like them if there's no batter on them. Like you need the batter. Ah, mm. it's kind of fucking. It's kind of a waste of chicken wing. Starving. I have to. They come to with no sandwiches. Right. <laughs> Marty loves wakes, you know. You're yeah, on about social know. media. Like people going on TikTok, he goes on RPE.ie, scrolls on it. it is. Weirdo, sure. That's a good thing about them there when you go on to them, it gives you a list of the names of all the people and all who've lost the loved ones. Uh, when you walk in, you can say, that's Can he hear all your stories? He doesn't, he doesn't know any of them. <laughs> you sure? What's your, um, what's your favorite uh, Pringle flavor? I'm not a I'm not a big Pringles fan now, I have to say, but I'm more uh, hunky dories, oh. buffalo. The buffalo flavour. Well, take that actually. So that'd be nice now. I'm not really a big hunkadori buffalo. Uh, ah, they're good. Fucking nice too. Well, are the salt and vinegar ones too? You're right up there. Like they're they're, they're tasty. Some there. Cheese and onion ones or the cheddar cheese are addictive. Yeah, the green ones. I like the yeah, big. Right. I like the. I like the big bags. The ones oh, the I, I bags. should. Hey, we're the same as that. It's, 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 wee bag, like. we're, we're in the. Um, we're in the. Uh, fuck. What? How you can you say this? But it, we we Pop we, we, we small bags and we small bars the thing in the past. It all it has to be the share size. Oh, and you hammer it yourself. Like. That's it. There's nothing in the sh- the share oh. size is now. There's new tor- tornado, tato tornado nacho cheese crisp. Get the Monday. They are fucking unreal. My fear. But you're getting hard on. <laughs> oh, they're lovely, sir. And they're prawn cocktail flavor, and they're new. What do you mm. call them? Tornadoes, tato tornado, um, nacho cheese. Is that the south tato or the north tato? I don't go on that house. <laughs> well, the Sterling ones, ones or the Euro ones? ones. No, but that's, a, that's another question. A lot of people ask me that there. What, what, what flavour of potato do you like the best? The, the yellow flavor. ones or the red and blue uh, ones? The yellow ones are red and blue. So um, You're sitting on Murph. You have an Indian, Karma, you're dying. Nam bread, a wee bag of Hunky Dory's, Buffalo sitting beside you. What is on the TV? What's your favourite movie? Give us a good one. Favourite movie? Uh well, I have two, like, uh, my favourite one of all time is obviously Top, uh, Top Gun. Oh, Lethal. Like, First, before you go anywhere, what did you think of the latest one? Ma- the Maverick one? Ah. Yeah, quite like the Maverick one. All right. Well. Yep. Like, just n- maybe not, didn't live up to the hype. That it was never going to, though, was it? It's never going to be nah. the first one. And my second one is uh, A Few Good Men. Oh, class. What, a Few Good that? Men. That's a fucking two firsts. Who, who's A Few Good Men? That's... Fucking. What do you call him, P? Marty Murphs and Vincent. Or P, you mean? <laughs> hey, that's two new ones. Who are you asking that, P? That's three good men is probably four is of Is that the, the porno? <laughs> <laughs> that's two years <laughs> behind cop, you're No, it, it's, it's uh, Did you see the porno of the Chelsea Jack team Nich- riding Jack Cole Palmer? Nich- Jack Nicholson, uh, Demi Moore, Tom Cruise. I watched the You big Tom Cruise fan? Who's Demi Moore? Like, like Tom Cruise, a lot of his stuff has been good. Is Demi that. Moore, is that Thing's ex-wife? David Moore's sister? That's the, the, the man that's got it, it's took sick there at the minute. He's right. there, Bruce Willis. Is not she, right? Yeah. Well, she, yep. she was not a uh, movie I watched last night. Substance, it's called. She's a uh, very, uh, she's a... Uh, she's like Monica she's Friends. She's the front of a TV thing, but she's getting out and your man wants a new one. She hears him. She goes on the men's toilet because the woman's toilet is blocked. She hears him saying, I need to get a new model. Get her out to fuck. Some boy gives her a letter for a substance to put on there. But see the start of it. It's nothing but tits and ass. I thought it was I'm a part I was watching. What so she takes this stuff and then her fucking <laughs> su- the substance. Her back opens and this new model comes out. But it's, she's just sitting with her tits and her arse. And uh, it's not bad, hey. <laughs> 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 but watch it. And what? I will. Uh, Hear, uh, speak no evil. Shite. 
Very good. Oh, it's shite, yeah. James McAvoy's on. No, I like it. I never that. anxious watching a movie, waiting for something to happen. Aye, Very good. I turned it off before anything happened. You're anxious, wasn't it? Oh, I didn't watch it, and it was shite. It's like going down shopping, not having your two euro for the trolley. You're <laughs> anxious as fuck. <laughs> you go and queue and then for the two euro, everybody standing beside you. What are you waiting on? Uh, two euro. Uh, no, that, that would be made too. Yeah, that's a good shout, by the way. Top Gun's a very good shout. I thought Maverick was brilliant as well. But you had to see it in the cinema. Is there another one coming out now too, isn't there? Yes, sir. I think there's a third one coming out. Is there? Ah, mm-hmm. oh, they'll start ruining it then. Ah, uh, it's a bit like Rocky. You get bored in the end. You know, you know he gets a shit beat out of 13 rounds and then wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, on that note, folks, we will wrap it up. Episode 56, Done and Dusted, Martin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much for coming on, Murph. Gentleman as usual. Thank you, man. And best luck, whatever you do, but keep us in mind now if you're going party or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a massive shout out too to this week's sponsor, Party Putters. Again, check them out on Instagram. Something different for your wedding day. And uh, yeah, as I say, I had them in my wedding two weeks ago and it was fucking brilliant. I'm enjoying them as we skater by shoes. Get up here, pee. Get up here, Mr. Murph, just hold on. Just, oh, do you end that? Aye, that was weird. Clip that and put it up on your Instagram page. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fucking joke, get sacked. <laughs> Sack himself. <laughs> no, nah, but again, Murph, thanks, William, for coming on, taking the time out to chat this. No bother, man. And again, as I said before in the podcast, any show, any live show we had, you've been there supporting us. And mm-hmm. again, it's just, a, it's just a fucking a thing that me and Marty always say. We've fucking met so many good people and you're one of them up there at the top. And mm. um, we love doing this and that's most of the reason why. And keep doing what you're doing, Murph. And hopefully we'll see you next season. All being well. Cheers. Thank you, man. See you later, folks. Merry Christmas. It's me, finally.